All right, so I'm gonna answer the question of how long will your fillings last? Well, it actually depends on a couple of variables, all right? Uh, one of those major variable is your the patient's diet, all right? What environment is that filling gonna be in? And that diet should be ideal, all right? And that, those ideal diets, the, you got a tooth over here, you got a person that had a filling already, but the diet that this tooth was in was not ideal. And that non-ideal diet is anything where the pH falls below 5.5. At that lower pH, it makes the tooth more porous, and once the tooth is more porous, bacteria get back in there. So once you get a filling, it doesn't mean it's gonna last forever. You have to maintain an ideal oral environment, an ideal diet, and that's what's gonna give that tooth a lot of longevity. There's another aspect that's gonna give it longevity is what's called filling design. That's in the dentist's control. The diet is in the patient's control, so it's a 50-50. Half patient, half dentist. So when a patient comes to me, I, I educate them on diet and what's gonna be most ideal environment for that filling to last the longest possible. That's gonna really gonna help out a lot, all right? So the fillings I chose, they have a longevity up to 20 years, which is astronomical. That's like super high. But in order to get there, the, the patient has to follow an ideal, I have to follow an ideal, all right? So I'll educate you on the diet part in another video, but right here we're gonna talk about what makes the filling design ideal. And this is what it is. So here you had a patient that came to me from another office. They had a filling placed at one time. And then over time, the patient didn't follow an ideal diet and the dentist didn't follow an ideal filling design principle. So what I mean by that is, you see this, here's your filling over here. It's got a large flat surface. There are no flat surfaces in the human body. It doesn't exist, all right? So what happens is as you chew onto this tooth, you're applying compressive force onto this large flat surface. And what happens is the filling actually, it's not a solid mass. It will flex a little bit. When it's flat like this, it's gonna flex a lot on the edges. So as it pulls on the edges, it releases from the edges. It can't stick to the tooth as well. If it can't stick to the tooth as well, a space develops. And in that space, where it goes? Bacteria. So now we got bacteria flowing underneath here, now we're into what's called another cavity. A cavity that occurs around an existing filling is called secondary decay. All right, now we have secondary decay around this filling. And in my other videos, I talk about how fillings are not what, what you see is not what you get. You're seeing the tip of the iceberg. So we see now decay occurring around this filling. This filling needs to be replaced. The decay needs to be removed. So when we remove this filling and this decay utilizing one of, one of my drills, I go in there and remove the filling, remove the decay. I'm then left with what you know as there's a lot of decay underneath there. So what you saw originally was this light piece right here with the filling cover it. Bacteria went underneath that filling because it can't eat filling material, only two structure. And it makes a large area of tooth decay. Now we had a problem that is actually worse than the original filling. So that's not a good situation, all right? So then once we're done with that, then we go ahead and fill the tooth. And as you see here, this tooth, it's hard to tell, but it actually has um, arches that flow. There's very few flat areas and there's no acute angles, like 90 degree angles or 45 degree angles. You can't have those really sharp angles because when you have sharp angles, you're gonna have things pulling on those edges. So an ideal design for a filling is not a flat surface. An ideal design is right here. So an ideal design follows the arch form, the natural arch form of the tooth. And in architecture, arches disperse and displace forces extremely well, which gives a lot of longevity to the underlying structure. And in a non-ideal filling structure, if you have a flat, flat, flat surface, as you put force on the tooth in chewing, that's compressive force, it pulls on the corners and, and that pulling on the corners is what's going to create the gaps and those gaps is what's going to cause the bacteria to get in there and they cause the filling to eventually fail and then you're going to have a bigger problem. So as long as the, um, the, the dentist follows the ideal form of a filling, that's 50% of the longevity right there. The patient then has to follow the ideal diet and that's what's going to get you an ideal filling restoration, longevity and health. Both those parameters are covered, and that's where I want all my patients to be.